Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday, and we are kicking things off with an amazing live trivia. But before I do that, I made like the cardinal mistake of having YouTube up in another screen. So give me just a second. I'm, I'm getting the dust off a little bit. Let's see. Is that the one? <laughs> nope. Give me one it second. No worry it about happened. it. <laughs> Justin, do you want to introduce yourself while I'm doing this real quick? So I'm back again. I'm Justin. Um, again, we're here for another Security Plus Trivia. I was here two weeks ago with, with Kayla. Now I'm here with Kelsey. But we also have a special guest that we're going to bring in in a second. Her name is Alyssa Miller. She's the Business Information Security Officer. I found it. For, <laughs> for S&P Global Ratings. So welcome, Alyssa. Hey, guys. How you doing? Excited hey, to be Alyssa. here. <laughs> You're so excited to have you. And I know I finally figured it out, everybody. So like I said, got the dust off. Okay, now we're really going to get into it. Kayla is probably like, wow, we probably should have had me come in. Today. <laughs> it's my fault for having so many tabs open. But um, Alyssa, we are so, so excited for you to be joining us today, no matter how hard it was for us to finally connect because uh, you kept getting caught in my spam filter. <laughs> But we are so excited that you are here. And before we get to trivia, we would love if you would tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming a business information security officer. Yeah. So the long story made as short as I can, um, you know, I, I kind of tell people I got into security by accident. Um, you know, I was always a hacker, a little kid. I was the one who took all my toys apart, you know, tried to figure out how like the VCR worked. So I took that apart. Um, parents weren't always really happy with me for some of that, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> uh, when I was, when I was 12, I, uh, you know, I bought my first computer. So I got a paper route of all things and saved up a thousand dollars, ran to Best Buy, got a computer and a printer and, and, you know, I, it didn't take long. I got myself a modem and I got connected to this service we had back in the day called Prodigy. And before you knew it, I had broken into that um, so that I didn't need to pay for it. Um, <laughs> but didn't really see that being a career, uh, you know, but I went to school, started going for pre-med, decided that, you know, college chemistry was not for me <laughs> and got into computer science. I started as a, a programmer. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but then after about nine years of programming, someone from our security team came over and asked if I wanted to join the security test team as a pen tester. Yeah. I didn't know how to do it, but okay, sure. Why not? You know, she yeah. was confident I could do it. And, you know, from there I spent six more years there. I've progressed through various levels of, you know, leadership. Uh, I've been through consulting roles. I worked for a value-added reseller for a while. Then I worked for a, a software, a security software vendor for a while. And now I'm at SMP. So it's been kind of a, a long, interesting trip. A lot of uh, serendipitous moments that kind yeah. of led to where I've landed now. But hey, here I am. Here you are. That yeah. is awesome. It's such a good yeah. story. It's funny. I actually uh, bought my first uh, PC. It was a it was a Dell. I we like had to use our dial up though to try and order on Dell.com. It was a really difficult time. So let us know. I actually saw somebody say in the comments uh, they shared what their first PC was. So what was your first PC and when did you get it? Let us know in the comments. Um, that's super fun. <laughs> Alyssa, what was the, what was the type of computer that you got from Best Buy? Oh God. So it was an Epson. Um, oh. I want to say like Apex series or something yeah. like that. It was an 8086 processor. So, I mean, you know, it was, this is back in the day. Um, <laughs> people did not have, it was not commonplace to have a PC at home. Yeah. So, you know, my family didn't have computers at home. I was, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, their little 12 year old kid is running around with a computer yeah. in their bedroom. Like, hey, here we go. I love it. Wow. I love it. Well, I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> with your paper route, that makes it a much easier transition. I actually, um, not that this is all about me, you guys, but I started working at a dog kennel. And um, so I was, making sure that their kennels were clean and all of that stuff in order to afford my first computer. So um, I, I love that we have that in common to, <laughs> to really do that. Um, okay, well, I know that everyone's here so that we can get into trivia and see if we can stump the BSO. 
Biso, however you say it. Uh, actually, Alyssa, I'm so glad that you mentioned that it's you said Biso because um, you said that there's like an animal that you're adopting, right, for this? Yeah. 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 I mean, people have probably seen, you know, how dev advocates have sort of adopted avocado. That's like their little mm -hmm. logo, mascot, whatever you want to call it. So, um, you know, we've been talking about, okay, for, for Biso, we'll just we'll adopt the bison because, you know, when you type Biso on your phone, it autocorrects the bison anyway. I love look it. At my, my Twitter profile, you'll see in my description, a little bison stand in there. So I love it. Well, in speaking of, we've got um, Alyssa's bio and some of her links in the description, as well as some of our own links for Kind of wrapping up Cybersecurity Month, we have 15 free resources, so definitely make sure to check those out and check out Alyssa's new book, The Cyber Defender's Guide, Career Guide, wow. right? Did I get yep. that right? Yes. Awesome. Yep. The title might change again. <laughs> um, <Hey. honestly. laughs> I just got an email from the publisher this week. It was like, um, we're thinking we might change the title again. I'm like, oh, well, okay, whatever. Well, there you go. Well, whatever. I mean, you were a programmer before, so iterate, iterate, <laughs> iterate, exactly. right? There yes. you go. Well, okay, let's get to trivia. Before we do that, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and Justin, let's get to it. All right, I'm going to get this pulled up. And again, we want this to be interactive. We want to hear from you in the chat. If you know the answer, please put it in the comment sections. But we're really going to lean on Alyssa for her expertise. And we've given Kayla the date off. She's <laughs> normally been our expert when it comes to this. Uh, but again, we're going to get right into these questions. So let me... I have it pulled up. And again, for those of you who have weren't a part of our trivia last time, this is Cert Master Practice. On in this tool, you get thousands of practice questions or hundreds, thousands maybe, of <laughs> practice questions that prepare you for the exam. So this is a tool you want to use right before you're ready to sit for that exam. You want to go through something like this. So last week we went through uh module one, attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities. Now we're gonna go through two architecture and design and again we're going to try to see if we can stump the b so by so <laughs> whatever you call it so we're going to go through this how we did last time i'm going to go through a couple of questions um and again we want this to be interactive if you know the answer please let us know in the chat but Alyssa, this is going to be for you so <laughs> oh i know this is going to be interesting too because i know we're talking like some physical security which is definitely outside my typical wheelhouse so we're going to see how this goes I'm, I'm curious to see how i do Absolutely. So again, we open the module and we're going to do 2.1 and 2.2, just a few questions from each. So I'll go ahead and click into here just to give you an idea of what the tool looks like. Um, so how it's going to go is I'm going to read the question. You'll be able to see the answers. Um, and what will happen is um, once I read the question, instead of writing out the entire answer, just hit A, B, C or D um, for the answer here. So I'll read the question, read the answer. And then again, Alyssa, we're going to kind of rely on you, but we want you to comment in the chat as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Can you guys see the screen okay? It looks good. All right. So first question, a security engineer is using several virtual servers accessible from the company network to lure in potential attackers. What has the security engineer created? So the answers, biometrics, honey net, man trap, honey pot, or I don't know. So again, Alyssa, give me one second. I know you probably know the answer. Um, so one thing great about this tool is when you click on one of the answers, and you'll see this in a second, it will pretty much give you an option to click once if you're kind of unsure, but if you're really sure about the answer, you're going to click twice. And, and, and basically, for those answers that you may be unsure about, um, and you may even get wrong, they'll come back around uh, in the tool to make sure you fully understand it before you proceed. So again, let us know in the chat. But Alyssa, what are you thinking for this, this question and the answer for this? So I'm looking at this. I love these answers because I like that, you know, CompTIA pulled in kind of like a, a slang term that isn't really <laughs> typically used to try to confuse you. But yeah, we're going to go with D, the honeypot. The honeypot. Right. A lot of people are saying uh, D or B. So let's go with D. And again, you see, click once if you're unsure. We're going to click twice if we're sure. We know Alyssa knows what she's talking about as well as everybody in the audit. So oh, we're going to don't, don't make that promise. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to click twice for sure and hit submit. Oh, man. And it says I'm incorrect. See? 
Ooh, okay, so, so it's going to be money net, which is interesting that we're going to, because it's multiple machines, we're going to call it a honey net instead of a honey pot. That's interesting. I love your explanation. But again, this question will come back around with a deeper explanation of why this answer was the wrong answer and why the right answer is the right one. So we'll just continue on. Yeah. Next question. All right. An HR representative reported that an email containing an employee's personal information was sent out by accident to the HR representative's friend's Gmail account. The user asked to retract the email, but the IT department explained that it could not be done. In what way can the IT department prevent a mistake like this from happening again? Answers are new computer use policy, classification markings, data loss prevention, email encryption, or I don't know yet. I would probably go with D, but I think you guys have a better answer than mine. <laughs> yeah, so these are tough, right? Because, I mean, all of these would be a part of it. You know, as I look at this, like you, you do want to have the policy and you want to have classification markings that are honestly going to play into what I believe is going to be the right answer because we're talking about how to IT and how IT would actually prevent it, and that would be the data loss prevention. Okay. So I'm going to click that the first time. What is everybody saying? And again, we want this to be interactive, although we're relying on our on our subject matter expert here. What is everybody saying as well? Everyone is saying C. Well, there's a lot of C's. There's some B's. And there are some that are just all of the above. So they're creating their, <laughs> their, own, <laughs> their own answer for it. So I do think we should go with C. Uh, we'll go with what Alyssa said, data loss prevention. All right. And we'll click that. Boom. There we go. Got it. Great job, yes. everyone. Great job, Alyssa, for providing So the issue that. I saw some people said email encryption, too. And the thing with email encryption is that doesn't really prevent it from getting to the recipient. So mm -hmm. you would send the email, but it would still ultimately land somewhere. And the encryption usually is between the two servers. So it's not like the user would encrypt it, and then that would protect it on the other end. Mm -hmm. Great wow. point. I like that. <laughs> Let's keep moving along. All right. A business is implemented a series of websites that collect customer information for marketing and sales purposes. The sites are mirrored in the number of countries, in a number of countries. What should be considered when implementing data retention for archival purposes? We have server cache poisoning, single point of failure, data sovereignty, time synchronization, and I don't know yet. Well, these are tough for me. So this one plays right into all the privacy regulations you, you read about all the time. And it's going to come down to data sovereignty and understanding, you know, where we can store that data and how that data can possibly be mirrored across systems or can't be mirrored in certain systems. Right. And yeah. Justin and I come up with that all the time. We're in marketing. And so we have to be <laughs> super, super careful about how we are collecting that data, where we're storing it, et cetera. Absolutely. So we're going to go with C. Is that, is that what everybody else is saying too? It looks like it. Yeah. There's a lot okay, of people. Great. Michelle Little says C. Phil Thomas says C. I think that we're going to go with data sovereignty. Let's go. Boom. You guys are amazing. All right. Yeah, let's keep so moving these are, along. These are good questions. <laughs> Again, these are some of the typical questions that you'll see. Not exact, but something similar to what you'll see on the exam. Definitely will get you prepared for that. All right. A major incident recently occurred at an organization. As a result, systems were down for several weeks and businesses and business was lost. If an alternate if an alternate site had been available for business continuity purposes, the organization would not have suffered. Analyzing the options and conclude which site type can be ready at a moment's notice. We have fault tolerant, proactive, hot, cold, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, come on, put them up there. Let's see what we got, because this is a good question. Um, because we, we see a lot of terminology in here that applies to this concept. But when we're talking about sites, there's a really specific term that's usually leveraged here. And in this case, it's C. We think about the hot site. Is that site that we can immediately switch over to and at a moment's notice and fire up our systems that are hopefully replicated and all set to go with the data that they need in order to run. So yeah, we'll go with C, hot site. All I right. love it. Phil said, heat it up because it's hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> 
the puns that keep coming. <laughs> I know, I know, I love it. All right, that's all right. This was our fourth question, so we'll do one more, and then we'll move right on to the to the next module. So let's see if we can end on this one on a good note. All right, identify the removable device that, when added to a system, provides cryptographic uh, cryptographic key generation, management, and storage. See, the test for you is we're going to test your pronunciation. Yeah, cryptographic right. key generation. <laughs> there we go. You know what? When I when I read a lot of these questions, I'm like, man, you really got to have a dictionary or be familiar with a lot of these. <laughs> so the answers are TPM, HSM, hardware root of trust, SOC, or I don't know yet. And you really have to know these acronyms, it looks like, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We love an acronym here in cybersecurity. What does everyone say that it is? Let's see. We're getting some uh, some answers flooding in. They are saying BHSM. Alyssa, what are your thoughts? Do you know what, what HSM stands for? Well. I am going yes. with B as well. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We're going to go ahead and be sure about that. And here we go. We Way correct. to go, everybody. Yes. That is awesome. Um, so let's, let's, I want to do one thing. Um, we're not going to go to another question. I just want to see if, it will go back around to that question we missed. And it looks like it did not, but maybe it'll come around the next one if we miss any questions. So we'll move right along to module 2.2. So I'm gonna go ahead and return to the beginning. And I'm not saying these are gonna get a little bit harder, but let's again, let's see if we can, we can stop Melissa with some of these <laughs> questions. So this is 2.2, summarizing virtualization and cloud computing concepts. So and same as before. Too, everybody, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to it cut you off. No, no, Justin, go ahead, go ahead. But, um, these questions map directly to the exam domains and objectives. So I, that's something that you definitely want to um, take a look at. Is it, It's walking you through that and helping to kind of groom you into how you can take one of these exams, which is awesome. And Alyssa, you were saying too that you were loving how this is kind of, I mean, yes, maybe the illustrations need some work, but they, uh, <laughs> you know, we, there are really good questions, right? Yes. yes. No, they're, they're not, I mean, they're not easy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, you know, I think sometimes people think like, ooh, you know, security plus it's an easy general cert, but no, the questions are, I mean, the, the answer is definitely, you have to know what you're talking about. You don't, you're not easy to just pick out what the right answer is necessarily. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll, again, like before I'll read the question, please participate in the chat. If you know the answer and Alyssa, let's see what we can do. So an information technology department in the United States postal service has migrated to a virtualized data center that does not allow commercial access. Only USPS employees can access internal resources. Which deployment model is this considered to be? We have community, hybrid, public, or private? Or my favorite, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, at first I was thinking that it was gonna be hybrid because you're kind of, you've got, you know, you're moving from, you know, the hybrid, you've got the cloud, you've got the data centers and you've, you're working through it that way. But I don't think that that's it because it's something, and granted, why am I even talking? Alyssa, this is your question. But <laughs> nope, not right while we're going through this, I'm like inspired to get Security Plus certified. And it's I'm like, gosh, I, like, I love Plus thinking now. about it um, in this way. But uh, I would say it's probably private. What do you think, Alyssa? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's where we would look at because we're, we're talking about, you know, that that uh, cloud connection that's going to be private to our network and it's isolated to only our network being able to access that cloud environment. So that absolutely is what we would refer to as a, a private cloud implementation. Awesome. All right. We're going to make sure we are sure. Hit submit and job well done. Speaking of, that is covered. I know that it's not our uh, a cybersecurity certification per se, but that is covered in Cloud Plus, and we just launched the new exam this year, and um, it does focus a lot on cloud security. So definitely check that out too. All right, moving right along. A company runs multiple VMs on a single physical server to increase availability and lower operating costs. To update files, the company releases a Microsoft patch. While the patch update pushed out, uh, it only reached a few of the machines uh, degrading the functionality of the server. What type of phenomenon occurred? So we have VM sprawl, DDoS, VM escape, or patch management. Let's see what everyone's Roll saying. Roll down so I can see that question again, because this is interesting. So what do you guys think in the chat as well? 
looks like there are some people saying D. Chris Smith says A. Let's see. Let's see. Tia says D, patch management. Um, Andre says A, VM sprawl. We're getting some more for VM sprawl. Yeah. So that's where I'm leaning as well. This is a tough one because I, you know, patch management certainly is there because that's the act of rolling out the patches, right? But yeah. um, we're talking about a failure that occurred. It's not going to be VM escape because, you know, virtual machine escape would be if I broke out of a virtual machine and was able mm -hmm. to control the host that it was running on. A DDoS would imply that I had a distributed denial of service where there were many machines that were sending traffic to this machine causing that slowdown. So yeah, VM sprawl seems like probably the most likely answer here. All right. All right. So we're just going to go with that. And you are absolutely there we go. correct. Great explanation and, and way to come up with that great answer. All right. We'll move along. We have a, just a few more. Employees no longer have the manual have to manually update the antivirus software on their local machines. The company outsourced the process, allowing them to spend more time completing their daily cloud computing functions. This is an example of which of the following? IAAS, PAAS, SAAS, or corporate owned? So this is another one that's got some gray area to it, right? So we know I, IAAS is infrastructure as a service. So we're not really talking about infrastructure here. Um, PAAS, PAAS is platform as a service. That's usually more of an extension of IAAS uh, where we launched that. So SAAS software as a service is the one typically we would think about more where someone is providing us in this case antivirus software as a service certainly it, it's co it's corporate owned is kind of more like hey we do it ourselves so that's the opposite mm -hmm. of what we're trying to do here so we'll go with c we'll go with SaaS. all right SAS. i'm kind of a SaaS. <laughs> <laughs> all right and there you we are, go you would be correct with that good job with that one I love it. Justin, I think we're, are we, <laughs> we're keeping Alyssa longer, but this is so much fun. So do we have like, maybe like one or two more questions? I think well, how about this? this? We'll do one more, which okay. I'm sure we're going to get it right. But if we, if we happen to get it wrong, we'll just keep going until we get it correct. So. Perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and on a high note. <laughs> and, uh, oh, good. And it's a multiple answer. Yes. Question. Oh, so this might be a little oh, bit tougher. We've done. So again, for this one, it's just select all that apply. It could be all of them. Or we can just, it can be, we don't know and click none of them. So we'll just see what we can do. All right. Edge devices that are placed in a specific location to pull data towards the center of an environment provide which of the following benefits to customers? Select all that apply. Minimum latency, enhanced security, cost, or prior, prior, prioritization of data. Are we ready to do another question too? Because we're going to get this one. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that already. I'm looking at it as like, wow. Um, so certainly minimal latency, right? Um, okay. You know, drawing, you know, the, the less traversing of the network there that we have to do, the better. Um, certainly it, it can provide enhanced security as well. Uh, so we'll take that too. I'm struggling with prioritization of data though. That's a, uh, hmm. This is a tough one. What are people this saying in the comments? Okay, we've got people that are saying A, B, and C. Um, Anthony says to select all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, um, Michelle Little. Hey, Michelle, it's good to see you. Um, C and A. Ooh. I'm going to go with ABC. Let's ABC. add cost in there too. Let's see what happens. All right. That's why I'm seeing a lot of people pick. So let's go with it. Oh, man. Ooh. We were okay. wrong. <laughs> so it says that we were sure and that we were incorrect though. So what's nice about this tool is that it will bring it back to us, right? And it'll let us know why, because we were pretty sure about that. But this also kind of helps because it's like your last step before actually taking your exam 30 to 60 days out from your exam is when you do this. So that kind of helps because it, it identifies those gaps that you need to maybe study a little bit more on. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, I'm studying now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, we're going to end on a high note. I think we're going to get this one right. 
before we come to a conclusion of this. So uh, a government ent entity requires strict control over a cloud-based application portal. Which cloud infrastructure type provides this structure? Public, private, hybrid, or community? Strict control over a cloud-based application portal. So it's the application portal side that gets really interesting here. And so, wow, this is, you know, ultimately I'm still going to go with B that this would be a private cloud. That would be best. Yep. That's what and, we're getting. That application from. portal is what's making me feel unsure <laughs> because I'm wondering if they're suggesting a little more of a hybrid situation here, but let, let's go with, let's go with private. All right. See what it says. And you would be there we correct. go. <laughs> There we go. And usually your first answer is probably your right answer. So good thing we Yep, that that's one. where I'm at. <laughs> yes. and like I said, it's, I just, you know, that's the thing with taking Tesla. Sometimes just those important little words can make all the difference. And so it had me doubting myself for a minute. Yeah. And this that is really. We already had a question about private cloud. So I was like, oh, we can't have two in a row, right? Right. <laughs> Well, everybody, this was this was amazing. This was really fun. Great job, everyone. Great job, Alyssa, for getting these answers, and great job giving explanations for why you're you know why we had these answers, the right ones. So, and if yeah, you've got any other questions for for people in the audience, if you have any other questions about uh, CompTIA uh, Security Plus Six Hundred One, let us know in the chat or in the comments in this video, and we'll do our best to get back to you. Yes, we are always happy to help. And so is Alyssa. Be sure to connect and follow with her. Uh, follow her on Twitter. The link's in the description. Buy that book. And uh, even if the title might change. And um, it may be the end of Cybersecurity Month, but cybersecurity is everyone's job. So be thinking about it more than just one month a year. It needs to be thought about every single day, right, Alyssa? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's security at this point is or cyber security in particular is pretty much just a way of life so yes. yeah it's everyone's job but more it's just kind of the thing that we we sort of need to do like yeah you know absolutely it's such a great point well as always everyone it has been a pleasure thank you so much for joining us and thank you Alyssa. we really appreciate it um we can't wait for the next one right justin absolutely and if you like the video please uh, drop us a like, follow us so you know whenever we go live and we yep. will definitely see you next time. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, everybody else as well. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Bye. Bye-bye.